You can be bitter, or you can make things better. <laughs> um, like the self-portrait series, um, I came up with a quote for that. Uh, to turn bad news into art. You know, that's, that's kind of, my, I think, my philosophy. is see, whatever hands dealt you, you try and make the best out of it. Uh, my name is Steve Edgar Bradbury. I used to call myself Steve Bradbury, but there's a uh, there's a, an ice skating champion from Australia that every time you Google up Steve Bradbury, you get him and you don't get me. So Stephen Edgar Bradbury. Uh, I think I've always been interested in art, uh, even from an early childhood. My mom used to read to me from this wonderful anthology of stories published by Houghton Mifflin that had uh, illustrations by N.C. Wyeth in it, the great um, great American illustrator, Andrew Wyeth's father. And I think that turned me on both to, um, to reading and, and to art. And then I got into comic books like every other kid in my generation, and then I graduated to those um, you know, sci-fi and fantasy paperbacks with all those terrific covers. Um, I grew up in the late 50s and early 60s, which I think was one of the, maybe the last golden age of paperback cover art and illustration. And, um, and I wanted to be a part of that, so I started you know, doodling and drawing a lot. And um, in high school, I had this terrific art teacher named Stan Tupler, who died a few years ago. He didn't really teach me any techniques, but he would do his art. It was a great inspiration to his art right there in the classroom. And then he would encourage us to pursue our own passions, which for me were landscapes, uh, seascapes, and the human figure. That was an incredible experience, uh, but I had to drop out after a year. Uh, in the early 70s, New York was a really tough town to live in. Um, for, you know, I was a clueless, suburban kid. I had $500 of money. I was so poor I'd take train up. And um, I lived in a, this tiny little apartment in the Bowery with four other kids. And, uh, we were as poor as I was and I lived on, on basically peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, uh, brown rice, and, and there was this Ukrainian deli where this woman would make me a tuna fish sandwich. It was so big I could eat half of it for lunch and the other half for dinner. <laughs> um, Cooper was great. They, they taught me lots of stuff, especially how to draw and how to look, because that's the real key to drawing. They also taught me some principles of composition, and they encouraged me to go to the art galleries and museums. Um, back then, the, the Met, you know, which is the greatest museum in the world, maybe, um, was strictly donation. So, um, you know, whenever I didn't have a, a class or it wasn't snowing, I would walk the 70, 80 blocks up there to, to the Met. I'd go through the park. And, and I'd spend the whole day there. I'd pay a penny to get in. And you know, the first couple of times they looked at me like, um, you know, like, how can you, how can you just give them a penny, you know? But then they got used to me because I was, I showed up so many, so many times. Uh, I learned a lot because I would make copies of my favorite works, mainly pencil drawings, but also some watercolors and ink drawings and stuff. And uh, I think that's that was my great, that was my great training. I dropped out after a year, bumped around, finally went up in San Francisco, where I fell in love with Chinese landscape painting. I started taking classes with this Japanese instructor who taught me a little bit of calligraphy but how to draw orchids and, and you know, flowers and landscapes and stuff. And I got so turned on, I, I studied, I enrolled in college and I studied Japanese and Chinese so I could communicate with him. And, and, and I went to Taiwan, I studied some landscape uh, painting there for a while. I got pretty good. I used to practice on, um, on telephone paper. I was so cheap, you know. And, um, I still have some of those, and I asked Gail to frame a couple of those for the show. So they'll be up. So it'll be kind of a retrospective show, I think. And then the only other training I had was with uh, Melanie Peter, who's one of the great local portraitists, and she taught me the, the rudiments of making a likeness, the structure of the head and stuff. And I took another class with uh, Nika Zakharov. I'm not very good at it, but um, it's one of my passions. So what motivates me? Um, well, I love to draw. I've always loved that. I was very introverted as a kid, believe it or not. And, uh, I, uh, and um, you know, I spent a lot of time drawing. Um, and I would draw pictures to impress people, especially girls. <laughs> uh, you know, basically, I, I, I'm a plein air artist. Or, and I also do live drawings, so I have my subject in front of me. And I really love to do the rivers and the springs, so I'll go out and, on a kayak or something, and I see something I really love, I want to draw tie the boat up, and then I just get my stuff out, and I'll just draw. And that's the way I usually do it. I, um, so I'm inspired by something I see. 
it's not like I plan on, you know, I'll say I want to do the Itchtucky River today and I'll, I'll go out there. I want to do Santa Fe Lake or Melrose Bay. And so just go out there and I look around and uh, if I see something I like, I'll, I'll do a drawing. This is the hardest thing about art, is knowing when to stop. You know, um, there's, a, there's a point where the drawing gets better and better and better and better, or the life, you know, the, the oil portrait gets better and better and better, and then you do this one stroke or this one smudge, and then suddenly it's awful. And you don't know how you ruined it, and you try and reverse it, but it only gets worse and worse. Um, so knowing when to stop is the, is the really key um, thing for me. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's an artist named Charles Hawthorne who taught, uh, I think, at New England in the 40s or 50s. If you get it into your head that you do not have to finish a thing, then you will stop while it is still right. And if it is right, it'll be right no matter how little or how much you've done. For then your imagination will finish it for you instead of you trying to finish it and ruin it. Which gets back to this idea of, you know, less is more. And Chinese landscape painting, you know, they, they always leave a lot unpainted. You, know, you suggest the stuff, you don't, you don't paint everything. And I think that's uh, really been the, the key for me. And that's the really hard thing to do is like, you know, when is the last stroke? You know, do I try one more or do I let it go? And it's really hard to know when. So I'm having an exhibit here in this room. It'll be a big retrospective, 40, 50 works maybe. Uh, I'll have maybe 10 or 15 pieces from the 70s and 80s for I quit art. And then I'll have lots and lots of stuff, new stuff, uh, uh, that I've done since 2015. I'll also maybe have uh, some folders full of old artwork, drawings I did when I was in art school and such. Um, this show is May 3rd, a Friday, 6 to 9, during Art Walk in Melrose. We'll have food, drink, wonderful music. Please come.